از اینجا می روم با قلب خسته به داغه یه گلستان گل نشسته به اینجا آمدم با چهره باب از اینجا می روم با دست بسته Alright. You know what's up. This goes to this camera. Doesn't matter, I don't mind, I'll do that. You can zoom, just, yeah. just go a little bit out of focus. If it's gonna be out of focus, that's okay. It's on manual, right? Yeah, it's not as well. Yeah, man. I've been so happy that you're not going to be able to get a lot of money. I've been so happy that you're not going to be able to get a تا به حال نخواستن و نتونستن تو اون کشور بمونن و به دلایل متفاوت از اونجا فرار کردن دلایل اقتصادی، اجتماعی، جنگ، ناامنی منم به دو دلیل عمده از ایران فرار کردم یکی این که بعد از 22 سال رنج، سرکوب و تحقیر دیگه نمیتونستم خودم رو با اون سیستم تطبیق بدم. به دلیل اینکه با گوشت و پوست و استخون من بی حقوقی رو احساس کردم به عنوان یک زن. بی ادالتی رو احساس کردم و اینکه زن اونجا هیچ حق و حقوقی نداره یک نظام آپارتایت جنسی به تمام معنا اونجا حاکمه. به این دلیل من از اونجا فرار کردم. I've been dealing with Iranian refugees for almost 10 years and I deal with a very broad range of people fleeing Iran. If I were to sum up why people flee Iran in one simple word, it would be intolerance. I've been a refugee lawyer here for over 12 and a half years now and I've represented many Iranian refugee claimants during this period, right up till today. And uh, the cases really haven't changed that much over this period of time. Um, and there've been a whole variety of reasons why uh, people have left Iran. I've interviewed several hundred Iranians who have fled from Iran. And I've heard many, 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 too many uh, tragic stories of um, why they had many reasons to flee. The Working Group on Refugee Resettlement is an agency which facilitates refugee resettlement to Canada and around the world. We regularly receive applications for, from refugees from Iran and they tend to fall into two categories, the first political and the second religious. Whether people are leaving because they're political dissidents and they were tortured or they fear being killed by the government or whether they are leaving because of smaller conflicts with government officials. They're always running away because the government is so extremely intolerant of any expression of disagreement with its policies. One of the main uh, reasons is there are people who've been uh, suspected of involvement or membership in uh, political opposition movements. The majority of the refugee claimants that I represent from Iran are here because they uh, oppose the government politically or they are perceived to oppose the government politically or they have engaged in behavior that is considered to be un-Islamic. We received applications from Kurds seeking resettlement to Canada and others who are members of opposition parties who have uh, run into problems with the government.
Amnesty International's concerns about human rights violations in Iran are long-standing. It's a country which we've given considerable attention to for, uh, for many years. Um, more rec most recently, our concerns have obviously involved violations that have been carried out during the time of the Islamic Republic. We've seen in Iran recently an upsurge in what I call social unrest. That is to say unrest that's not related to politics, it's not necessarily engineered, if you will, by students, but rather is the ordinary people who are complaining about uh, the cost of electricity or cooking oil or the absence of uh, pure water supply. Um, these people are going into the streets and are mounting major demonstrations to protest against what we would call the disarray of municipal services. Some of the most uh, obvious, uh, I guess, causes of, of their having fled the country have been on the basis of, of gender. Many of these people were women and uh, their stories were absolutely heartbreaking. Another group that we, we get here in Canada a lot are women, women who have uh, come from abusive relationships, many of them, and of course they too uh, are unable to obtain any kind of redress from the Iranian government. In 1999, 12,000 Iranians showed up at European border points and requested um, refugee status. In the year 2000, this number had increased to 27,000. That is, it had more than doubled. And these individuals, uh, both those who have been persecuted on the ground of religion and those who have been persecuted as a result of either their political opinion or the political opinion that the Iranian government perceives that they have, uh, ha have been subject to torture. Many of those individuals have arrived in Canada with uh, evidence of that torture with um, marks on their back, uh, psychological problems and inability to sleep, fear that people are going to come to their homes where they are living to arrest them without reason and have had to seek psychiatric treatment on their arrival in Canada. The other thing that we see a fair amount of is corruption on the part of the Iranian authorities. Bribery is rampant and in fact many of the claims are only able to escape be because they're able to bribe officials. Now, if officials have been asked, Iranian officials have been asked why this emigration is occurring. And the answer usually given is because the society can no longer provide uh, assurances that these people will enjoy uh, economic security and the political security. There's very little freedom of expression in Iran. This affects particularly artists, visual artists, but also poets uh, and uh, writers of novels and, and makers of, of documentary film. The situation for writers and journalists in Iran is horrific. In 1998 alone, in Iran, 11 newspapers were shut down and 10 journalists were thrown in jail because of their work. In 1994, a group of writers came together and composed a text calling for an end to censorship in Iran and for greater freedom of expression. This text was subsequently signed by 134 cultural figures in Iran from uh, the literary world, film world, and so on. Since that time, there seems to have been a concerted campaign that seems aimed at trying to eliminate many of these people. Well, the killings of Iranian intellectuals in the Islamic regime is not something new. It almost started immediately after the revolution and ceaselessly continued inside and outside Iran up to the present. The only difference is that this time, as a result of intensified internal conflicts within the regime, within the different factions of the regime, 
and also as a result of opening up the, of the political climate, as a result of pressures from the people, now these news came into the surface and we hear about it. On top of that, uh, late in 98, three dissident writers were found strangled to death in Tehran. And uh, it's come to light that the secret police are responsible for it, they've admitted as much, and yet they say that a rogue element within their ranks is responsible, not them. Some societies simply close down newspapers or ban newspapers, whatever you want, and that's the end of it. Iran is now in a situation which is going on to that second stage, not only banning the newspapers, but taking the journalists and putting them in jail. Many names have come to our attention uh, of writers who, who have been pen cases, who have been arrested, who have died in jail, others who have been stabbed in the street and left to die, others whose bodies have been found in the morgue, still others who have been disappeared and who, who have not yet been found, and others who have been forced to flee Iran. Uh, religious freedom is unquestionably a very serious human rights issue in Iran at this time. Religious minority situation is quite simple. Iran, of course, is an Islamic state, but there are three recognized minorities. Uh, I've referred to the fact that we've uh, consistently been concerned with the treatment of uh, those who follow the Baha'i faith. And these include the Baha'i, uh, the Christians, and the Jews. We've also over the years had serious concerns with regard to human rights violations of uh, uh, Iranian Jewish, within the Iranian Jewish community. I've had people who were even Muslim who fled from Iran but who didn't conform to the practice of Muslim in the way that the government interpreted it. All other groups are unrecognized minorities and this is where uh, a fair amount of suffering occurs. Christians are at risk in, in Iran, and among the Christians, people who have converted from the Muslim faith into the Christian faith are particularly at risk. Uh, the, the conversion process is, is considered a sin, it's considered uh, anti-government, and those people are accused of, of being associated with, with values uh, from Western Europe and the United States. There are also serious concerns with regard to the human rights of Iranian Christians. Um, over the years this has included killings of um, uh, members of the Iranian Christian community including um, some church leaders uh, and ministers. Um, very serious concerns on that front. I've heard testimony from many people of the Baha'i faith that while they were being tortured, they were asked in a very derogatory tone, well, where is your God now? Why can't your God save you now? Um, women who are so, well, where are your women friends now that you are being tortured? They aren't here to protect you. And this is done during severely uh, painful sessions of torture, that the psychological is very clearly present in the prisons of Iran. <laughs>